Hi, I'm Danny, also known as GCSE Potential, and this is how to get into Oxford for maths. So today I'm here with Joe. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Joe. I'm a first year math student at Worcester College, Oxford, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to here to talk about how to get in. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, Joe got 100% in the math, which is like the most unprecedented shit ever. Um, so there's, there's going to be a link hopefully somewhere. Uh, we made a separate video for that. But today we're going to cover the whole application process. So GCSEs, A-levels, admissions tests, interviews, etc. So to begin with, just before any of this, um, why do you want to do maths and why did you want to do it at Oxford? So maths in general, uh, I really enjoyed ever since a young age because it's something you do for a long time. Yeah. To me, maths is like a whole other language that I, I know I sound like a twat, but it's so interesting to me. The fact that if you're asked a specific question, which may seem completely pointless or maybe even really obvious, you can prove it so precisely mm. and just give that to someone and hear, say, here's a page that like, inarguably proves this statement. I find that really beautiful, basically. And I just can't write essays like that. <laughs> I, I can't have an opinion anymore. No, yeah, no, I mean, I've taken this degree because I'm just so indecisive, but it's so interesting. Perfect, thank you so much. They're clearly obsessed with maths. Um, I think that's probably a prerequisite to do the course here since it is just so difficult. Oh, yeah. um, have you met anyone who doesn't like maths and is doing math? No, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 that'd be interesting. I'd like to study them, but no, everyone here is obsessed with maths. I like to study them, oh my God, but yeah. Okay, sensational. So to begin with GCSEs, what GCSEs you sort of need as far as you're aware? What GCSEs do most students have? What are they sort of looking for? Are there any important GCSEs in particular? I think I might know one of them. Yeah, but. No, uh, th this might shock you, <laughs> but I'm gonna say maths. Uh, obviously maths is, is one you have to take. Yeah. Uh, there's not much point going to explaining why you need maths to do maths because yeah. I think we know. Yeah. Uh, some schools offer further maths GCSE. So I did further maths GCSE, which is also a really good way to get into like higher level maths, like A level, so you do things like matrices and differentiation, which is things you don't cover in GCSE. If you're interested in maths, it's good to take further maths, see if you are still interested in higher level maths, because you don't want to get into an A level or even a degree that you don't enjoy because you, you're not going to survive. Outside of maths, uh, triple science is probably a good, a good way to go for a maths degree, because not only do you do pure in maths, you also do applied. Things like physics in particular is a really good science to do. Uh, obviously you don't get the choice in GCSE, but um, it develops like how to ap apply maths. Perfect, and like generally speaking, what GCSE scores do you need? Because obviously Oxford only interviews about a third of applicants, so how important are your GCSEs to that for? Specifically for maths, you want grade nines in maths, uh, science, and further maths if you do it. And I think Oxford on the whole, they're looking for about a grade point eight average. I think that's a baseline for like a, anyone who's applying. Of course, like it fluctuates depending on like what areas you're from, what school you go to, because obviously a school that has a lower grade point average overall, getting a high one be more impressive than say, like I think my school had probably quite a high grade point average. So you probably want to get higher, like you want to stand out. So you want to get as high grade po grades as possible. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the GCSE stuff. So moving on now to A-levels. So you pick your A-levels, I know at the end of GCSEs or whatever. Um, what A levels are important? Um, which ones do you think complement maths? Obviously, you have to take maths. And what grades are you sort of looking for? What are the entrance requirements for Oxford maths, etc.? So on Oxford, like if you go on the website looking at the maths thing, obviously they require you to take maths for obvious reasons. For further maths, it says uh, it's not necessary but useful. Definitely take further <laughs> maths. They basically teach the further maths curriculum in two weeks. Oh, I would, God. I would not go into it without doing further maths. Aside from that, it doesn't hugely matter. As I was saying, like physics is probably a good one. Like I did physics and chemistry as well. About 80% of us at maths have done that. But also I, one, of, one of the people here did French. Oh, wow. So, I mean, you can get in with a range of things. In terms of grades, my offer was A star, A star, A with the A stars in maths and further maths. Because okay. because it's such a competitive subject, they really want the best of the best. Mm. So if you're not getting A stars in those subjects, um, not looking good. You're not the best of the best <laughs> for maths. It kind of yeah. makes sense though, because I feel like I love maths, but I'm not that good at maths. And yet I'm still able to get an A star in further maths just because I worked hard. So I think it's, it's such a prerequisite because if you can't handle further maths at that A star level, then you won't be able to handle the Oxford course, to be frank. Um, but yeah, final question. Do you, you need three A levels, four A levels? How much does it matter? Um, after getting your offer, did you consider dropping an A level? Three four it doesn't hugely matter i mean i would uh, recommend going for four a levels only because it look it's more impressive on an application and further maths and maths are quite like a tied a level so i think it's probably 
it'll keep you more interested if you do four A-levels. Perfect. I think another thing to consider is it probably depends on school. Like, I feel like if you go to Eton, they probably expect you to do four. Oh, just, yeah. Be- yeah, yeah, yeah. just because, like, there's a different standard. Whereas if you go to, like, a state school, which probably hasn't had that much experience with Oxbridge, they don't mind as much if you have three. So context is definitely really important throughout this entire process. Obviously, it's not the be-all and end-all. You can't get, like, one on the MAT and get into Oxford because you went to a state school. Um, but it sort of helps you. It's just contextualizing the process, which kind of makes sense equity-wise. Um, so moving on to the personal statement. Obviously, there's a lot of controversy with regard to the personal statement in maths because I feel like it's probably a bit more important for humanities. But what was your approach for the personal statement for Oxford Maths? Um, what other universities did you apply to? How important is the personal statement for them? And what advice would you give to students? So personal statement-wise, I think you're kind of right. I think it's it's harder to write a personal statement for maths, which is why it's, le- I'm going to say, less useful. It is still useful. They still read it. Don't slack on it. Um, so I applied to Oxford, Bristol, uh, Durham, Bath and Warwick, they all sort of expect the same thing for maths and really what that is is just they want to see your enthusiasm for maths Mm -hmm. because you can't really show your ability for maths in a personal statement like you can share your achievements that's perfect that's something really good to do but you can't like answer a question as you could in like humanities but for maths what they're looking for is enthusiasm so they want to see you've done wider reading like see if you've ordered a book or anything or you've done any super curriculars something good for maths is the maths challenge Mm. put in every single award you got for (laughs) maths challenge they'll eat that up um any like summer schools you went to just try and get into the maths scene as much as possible outside your a-levels outside your gcse's because otherwise you're not going to stand out yeah. for such a competitive subject. You need to be doing these things. Very fair. Um, I think math challenges are really important, especially as we pivot now to the admissions tests. So to get into Oxford Maths, you have to do the MAT, which is the Mathematical Aptitude Test. This year, so from this year onwards, so 2025, you have to do 27 multiple choice questions. I think the last two or three might be worded. I don't know exactly. Yeah, so I think it's it's like 27 multiple, question, uh, multiple choice questions or something. I think the last two are, are long answer questions okay. like they used to be, yeah. but there's only two. Yeah. Okay, so there's only two longer answer questions. Um, and previously it was like 10 multiple choice questions and then uh, long answer questions. So the structure has changed, but um, I guess to begin, well, obviously <laughs> Joe got 100% on the map, which is amazing. There's a separate video. So we'll probably do like a quick overview. Um, I mean, bridging this whole math challenges thing, Joe did a lot of work in math challenges. I think that makes complete sense, right? If you're going for a math course, you're probably going to want to be good at these math challenges and enjoy them. Um, it's not like a necessary thing, but it's definitely probably a sufficient thing. Like if, that, that's a math language. Yeah, like if you're doing really well on BMO1, BMO2 and stuff like that, then it's like, it's kind of like a pipeline. Like I imagine all the people who did BMO did math at university and were really good at it. Or CS. Um, so yeah, I guess to begin with like math challenges, how important are they? Should you use them? And then the second thing is just like quick overview of your prep for the MAT and obviously a plug for the other video. Outside of importance, I think if you want to do a maths degree you should be interested in these things and like you'll grow your maths ability over time without even noticing it so you don't like force yourself to do these because then you're just going to get a distaste for maths Mm -hmm. it should be something that you enjoy doing and yes like it really does help with your maths knowledge because it gives you a different way of thinking about maths questions because maths challenge questions are meant to be challenging they're not meant to ma- me- yeah exactly they're not meant to match your GCSE or your A-levels because then you're just doing another exam mm. which no one wants to do I mean I love math I don't want to take another maths exam mm. like the maths challenge was so much more interesting um so for my own suggestion like if you really enjoy doing maths but maths challenge stuff isn't really your thing then maybe consider courses which use a lot of applied maths so for example I study economics now um e- economics is very good for that sort of thing if you're good at computation like just doing the differentiation or whatever I think economics some of the sciences are good so maybe natsky engineering um those sorts of disciplines but definitely talk to people who are in a similar situation to you maybe a little bit older and they can provide some advice but yeah any um rough thoughts in the mat like aside from the stuff we talked about in the video or maybe just a plug to the video like rough overview of how you can prep for the mat uh mat so obviously it's split into multiple choice questions and long answer questions and the way you approach them is slightly different Mm. but the key is just loads and loads of practice because it's it's not like a humanity subject where you can read something and understand it maths it's full on you have to go for it you have to practice these questions and there's lots of little tactics you can like learn from doing all this practice like along the way which which speeds up your like maths ability start with like understanding how to get the questions right and then you should move on to how can i do this in two and a half hours (laughs) because it is not a lot of time when you're coming to a hundred mark paper yeah definitely go and watch the other video because it's absolutely brilliant uh, with Joe himself. Um, so moving on to the interview now, 
um, so Joe applied to Worcester College, which is a very competitive college, one of the best, one of the most beautiful. You should Google it. Um, and he actually had the opportunity to like hear a little bit about his interview from his DOS tutor. Okay, fine tutor, like the people who teach him at the tutorials and whatnot. So to begin with, sort of um, without divulging too much, what was your interview like? And then we could probably touch on the feedback that you got and maybe how to prepare for the interview. So I'm not sure if it's the same across all colleges, but for Worcester, I had three interviews. Okay. So I had two interviews at Worcester and one interview at a different random college. Do you remember the college? Pembroke. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've spoken to people from Pembroke. I'm sorry for them. In terms of like like what the interviews are, they don't really care about you as a person at that point. Mm. I sort of got into the interview, which is online now, yeah. as they all are. Um, they for Oxford. All online for Oxford. For Cambridge, you might differ. For college to college. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I got into the interview online. Uh, they asked, can you hear us? Are you Joe Whitehouse? Maths begin. That was it. <laughs> I, they did not ask me anything about myself. Like, they didn't, they didn't ask if I was having a good day. But honest, <laughs> honestly, I quite enjoyed it. I quite just liked going straight into it. Yeah. It released the anxiety immediately because yeah. I was like, yeah, I can do <laughs> I can do the thing I'm good at. Um, but yeah, so it was on a tablet. So they had like a, it's on a Miro whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you had to write down your answers. They'd ask you different questions and you basically just write down your answer. And the key was you have to explain every step you're doing. They wanted to see how you would respond to a question that you wouldn't have seen before, yeah. that you're not expected to get right. That is the key thing. You're not expected to get it right. And they just want to see what how your brain's working, how you do process it. Because in the interview, they they know whether you can do maths or not. They've yeah. seen your MAT scores at this point. They know if you're- You didn't even see, he didn't even see his oh, MAT score before. I, I didn't know. Yes, yeah, so he didn't know he had gotten hundred percent. So he's thinking, oh God, the interview's going to be make or break. When in reality, like, well, to be fair, there's some students, like half, I think. Gone. If you look at the statistics for the MAT paper that in, I did in my year, uh, you can see how many people got between 96 and hundred. Yeah. And a quarter to a half of the people didn't get offers they all they all got interviews yeah. but clearly i think the issue is uh, with those people who got such high marks is that they're too good yes that when they got into the interview didn't like have the ability to learn maths mm. as they expected you to do in oxford because oh, it's a, an interview is just like a tutorial yeah. which is very important in oxford maths because you do about six a week i got 100 in the mat and i got things wrong in every single interview <laughs> on every single question yeah. they were like and it, it's just like a tutorial they go to you well, why do you think that and they'll go like oh that's not quite right how could you solve that then you'd go oh yeah yeah i said i did this and they'll be like yeah that's perfect amazing and how did you go about preparing for your interview um, I think a good thing to start with is a mock interview, obviously. Um, get it arranged by, so m luckily my teachers arranged me a mock interview, which I was very appreciative of. And I got someone from a teacher from another school who went to Oxford Amazing. to give me an interview. And he just gave me his thoughts on how I did. And he was, uh, he gave me questions like it. That's always good practice. Get as many of those as possible. If you have someone in your family who goes to Oxbridge, if you're lucky enough for that. Very unlikely, but even so, if you do, rinse that. If you're lucky enough for that or anyone, anyone you know who goes to Oxbridge that can give you an interview. Obviously. And even if you don't know anyone, you can rinse them on LinkedIn. <laughs> so oh, obviously you can just approach them asking for advice they will be happy to do so if they're on linkedin definitely like people love talking about themselves and also like if you're from a state school or something which is the situation that you're likely to be in if you don't know anyone who's gone to oxbridge then people are very very willing to help especially if they're from a similar background so when i applied for ppe for example and when i applied for econ i had like almost 10 mock interviews and i was just like hey i go to a state school i don't have much support please could you give me a mock interview just people who are there doing pp at oxford or economics at cambridge um so yeah people are very very happy to give you those interviews i think uh, another another good thing is to, like practice teaching okay. any maths you're doing to people for like your friends or your family if they care enough about the maths you're doing because I mean for example like in my A level to teach taught myself further pure it was me and uh, one of my friends did further pure because neither of us wanted to do further stats and <laughs> so you know and it was good practice for me because I got to teach them further maths yeah. because I obviously I think I was probably better at the maths than they were yeah. because I was so interested in it mm. but it's a good practice to teach because it means you're saying your thoughts and you can get response uh, from a person who maybe doesn't understand it as well as you. So you know how to teach it better, how to like alter the way you're thinking. Amazing. And just like the final part, this is very unique, by the way. Um, this is very rare to have, but we've got some interview feedback from the tutors themselves. So sort of what do they say about your approach to the interview? What are things you would recommend, like actionable tips based on what they've said? And yeah, I guess like final remarks after that. Yeah, so I think the interviews basically, I think there's about three different marking points that they're looking for, which is ability in maths yeah. obviously um uh how you learn math how you get like take feedback and how you apply it 
mm-hmm. to continue when you do things wrong or something and in like enjoyment and enthusiasm so it may seem like easy to do but one of the things that's really important to do in interviews be happy that you're there <laughs> like you're, you're applying for a subject that you really want to do like enjoy it yeah. don't like obviously it's normal to be nervous I was shitting bricks when I was doing my <laughs> interviews but I still I still really enjoyed everything yeah. I was learning it was interesting stuff to me and they picked up on it I, I had feedback saying oh Joe seems like he's a very motivated and <laughs> intro- well, that's one way to put it <laughs> yeah I was obsessed um <laughs> but yeah uh ability in maths the way to do that is just do a lot of maths yeah, get of get good at it being able to learn maths is very important yeah. take the listen to everything they're saying if they're telling you to do something in one way, do it in that way. You can talk about how like you'd think to do it in another way, yeah. but if they're telling you to do something, you should definitely think about doing it. Yeah, yeah. The key is just listen to what they're saying. Uh, talk about like how you would approach things, but if they're leading you a different direction, follow that direction, see where it goes, and see if you can adapt to the mask because that's what a tutorial is like mm-hmm. in Oxford. I think that's such an important point actually because I feel like with humanities and social sciences, they might challenge you and you can push back, but with maths, like if they challenge you you have to switch direction. And I think maybe those people who did do really well in the MAT were like, oh, they didn't really want to go down the other route because they already knew the route which worked and that probably worked against them. So showing that flexibility of thought is extremely important. Just out of interest, were there any other weaknesses in your interview um, which maybe you could reflect on? A lot of time, which it, it's natural because of anxiety, there would be moments of pauses yeah. where you just sit there staring at the question, not knowing what to do, which you should not do. Like from experience, it was awkward. Mm. That's that's one thing, but also they just, they, they don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. And that's the whole point of the interview. They need to know what you're thinking and how you approach maths. Mm. So it's always good to just talk wherever possible, even if you know what you're saying is wrong, it'll give them an idea of like how to push you in the right direction, but never stay silent because they, they can't get anything from that. And don't just write down your answer to a question because what do they do with that? They've done the MAT, they, they, <laughs> they know you can do that. Yeah. They want to see your like processing and how you think about maths, yeah. Because if you don't verbalize your thought process, they're not gonna understand what's going on. But yeah, I think that probably wraps up everything. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, Joe has his own stuff to offer if you're interested. I run tutoring for things like admissions tests, and A-level of maths and further maths, uh, which you can find on my LinkedIn. If you just search up Joe Whitehouse, it'll all be there. <laughs> and uh, what scores did you get in A-level maths, further maths, step and MAT? Okay, let's do this. Uh, A-level maths, 295 out of 300. A-level further maths, 292 out of 300 with um, further mechanics and further pure with my modules. Uh, MAT, 100%. There's a video on it. Uh, <laughs> and Steph, I got an S, 109 out of 120. So I'm Very qualified. Um, and as well as that, BMO2 distinction. Yeah, BMO2 distinction. Which is like top, well, top 100 mathematicians take part in BMO2. So to get a distinction is just like... How, like, what, what percentage is that? I don't even know. Uh, yeah, so about 25 people in the country got yeah, that. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So top 25 mathematicians in the country. Uh, one key thing to keep in mind, though, just as a point, is like some mathematicians are extremely good but can't explain stuff. But as you've hopefully grasped from this video, I think Joe's very good at communicating. So yes, yeah, so go for Joe. <laughs> and hopefully charges reasonable rates too. So yeah, if you want to contact him, you've got his LinkedIn, you've got his email. Um, LinkedIn is preferable, but email also works. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And hopefully good luck with Oxford. Good luck.